Hello and welcome to the Borealis Experience. I'm your host Aurora and I'm very happy to be spending some time with you today. Today is the 32nd episode and um, just a quick announcement that I will be hosting on a different platform now. So if you have iTunes and Spotify, you are safe. If you were listening to this podcast on any other platform than iTunes, Spotify, um, Stitchers, and one other that I can't recall now, then please join iTunes or Spotify. Um, yeah, I'm very excited. I have a new platform where I can edit better and I can um, reach out to you in a different way and this is all very exciting for me because I'm not a computer nerd I'm the exact opposite but it's all gonna be fine <laughs> I'm gonna be patient and bite through it um, because you're so worth it I want you to have the best quality um, when you choose to spend time with me so let's dive in Today I announced, um, yesterday, I mean I announced that I will be talking about emotional pain and aggression. Let's talk about emotional pain first because I feel emotional pain is the first step that leads us to be uh, aggressive. Do you car carry pain around with you and don't even know it? Um, how do you find out? There's um, this awesome guy called Eckhart Tolle and he describes it as the pain body. So if you think about your physical body, um, now imagine your emotional body being just as susceptible to pain than your physical body. And when someone is attacking us, when something hurts us, it creates a scar on our emotional body. And can you imagine how it would look like, feel like, be like to have these wounds visible? I would sure hope that we would all be way more gentle uh, with each other. Um, but let's think about all the stuff that has hurt you in the past and did you really get over it or is it still bugging you today? We can go even into your childhood and everything that happens between zero and seven years of age is kind of burned into your heart where and that stuff is really hard to dig out and expose and get rid of because it's really burned into our um, little spongy brain. <laughs> Sponge because we soak everything up um, when we are um, little. So all the experiences that you've made so far um, have left an impression on you, you made your conclusions, you might have found resolution and closure, but no one navigates through life with a clean um, shirt, uh, so to say. We all have stuff that we had a hard time to let go that is still bugging us. And um, when we get injured, when we get emotionally attacked, um, then what our brain does is detaching from that experience or whatever comes up in the future that reminds us of that experience will have a huge impact on us and a huge reaction will arise because of stuff that is being triggered. We learn then to avoid or resist or fight 
everything that reminds us of that pain that has happened to us in the past. And maybe you are doing this consciously, but most of the time that stuff happens unconsciously. And we just see it in how people react to us. And sometimes we don't get why people react in a certain way because we are so unaware of how we behave that we only focus of what is happening um, outside. And why is that a bad thing? Um, it is a bad thing because we usually then retreat into victim mentality and blame others, see all the faulty things that happen uh, outside of us, but we can't quite see what is happening inside of us that we could correct and where we have the power to change. And so if we learn to avoid pain, resist or fight um, potential pain, because it is our brain who can see the danger, but because of a distorted view on reality yeah you are so scared of being left alone again uh, let's say if that was one thing in your childhood that now every time the slightest um, moment of loneliness comes up you just freak out and you have to like try to um, suffocate that ugly feeling of lo loneliness um, and we can relearn, we can unfuck ourselves, so to say, from from those um, avoidant um, detachment um, behaviors and can reintegrate and become the person we were supposed to become again. Because when we close ourselves up and like try to protect ourselves too much, then we also close ourselves up to love and the most beautiful things in life that ask from us to be courageous, right? Like when you live in fear, when you live in a constant state of protectiveness, then you really miss out. And that should be enough of a reason to dig up old stuff and look at it and then put it to peace, put it to sleep forever. So let's look at some examples. Um, we have racism, we have heartbreak, we have accidents, we have disappointment. Um, that all can happen and deeply injure us and, and even shape our perception on life and on society and on people in general. Um, when we make these um, experiences, then usually we see black and white. There's racism from white people against black people and from black people against white people. Um, I experienced it when I was living in South Africa. Uh, like for four months, I had... Um, really a taste of what racism feels like and I know how crippling it is and scary um, but I refuse to see South Africa as a racist country like it's not just to then make a general like radical conclusion just because I had a bad experience um, same with Heartbreak, yeah, when you go through a really terrible heartbreak, of course you have to heal and rest and, and rejuvenate and everything. But there comes a time where you have to go out there again with a complete open heart and mind and be curious about the other person and notice when your mind is trying to protect you and when you're trying to run away from intimacy again. You're probably wondering when I'm finally get into aggression, but I'm getting there. Be patient with me. <laughs> um, so when shit happens, um, it is burned into our memory like a scar. And to avoid future pain, we subconsciously 
change our behavior. And that is so tricky because, as you probably know, subconscious means that we are absolutely not aware that our behavior is changing, that we're becoming more dark or more heavy or more aggressive even. And that affects how we relate to people and things and in turn affects what we bring into our life, attract into our life. You don't have to be all too esoteric to um, understand that. I don't want to say because I know you can follow me. But what you shout into the forest, you receive back. <laughs> There's a quote like that in German. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, if you have a bad mood and you behave aggressively, then there's a huge chance that the feedback will be negative as well. Except if it's a person who can cut through your bullshit and see your pain, but usually it has to be a person that knows you for a long time. So your behavior changes on a subconscious level and you attract things out of the sun that you don't really want, but you don't understand why. And this is because of the emotions that we send out into the world and that make us feel stuck and influences greatly how we make choices. Our decision-making is hugely dependent on how we feel about ourselves and others. And this is what I want you to be aware of today. And it even changes the way you see yourself and you feel about yourself and you see and feel all others. All of it is affected. So let's go deeper into an example here. Let's say that in high school you were bullied that one time because you were not a good sportsman, sportswoman, and people started making fun of you. So how do you step into the world then? You step into the world thinking that you are not sporty, not capable of any physical activity, and you retreat. You maybe, not because of a passion, uh, become an artist because you think you're not worth being a sporty person because you had that shitty experience. And it can be the other way around too. You can be born into a family of intellectuals and bankers, accountants, whatnot, but be born into a soul um, of being an artist, a singer, a songwriter, or a painter. So how do you feel about yourself when you bring back a painting from school and your family says, well, but your math grades suck. But your English skills suck. So how do you feel then about yourself? Of course, you're going to think that you're a useless piece of human being who has nothing to serve the world. So the experiences you made in the past that might have shaped you, that you maybe have forgotten about it, and really affect the way you see yourself and then the society around us that at some times, uh, some point in our life has taught us that we are not okay how we are and we have to change to fit in because otherwise we get excluded or whatnot. And I feel this is the root cause of aggression and aggression is the most misunderstood emotion that there is because yeah you can be an aggressive car driver or sportsman sportswoman but aggression among people is deriving because of feeling misunderstood feeling powerless feeling not seen and feeling as if you don't matter it's a deep feeling of sadness that turns people into evil, aggressive people. And I can talk from experience because I've been there and um, have not completely healed from it yet. I still have tremendous aggression inside of my chest. But I learned to 
channel it out and to be aware of it and go deeper. If you can think about a pyramid, aggression is more uh, on the top level of the pyramid of emotions and lower levels of emotions like the deep base of aggression can be shame and sadness and if we would learn to see it in ourselves and then reflect that into the outside world again and if we could teach people to see it in other people and not react to the aggression that is happening but seeing the bullshit that is going on underneath we would be such a strong society and so supportive with each other I don't know if you can hear it in my voice but this topic is really dear to me <laughs> um, aggression is really a tricky tricky emotion because it pushes people away when you want them to be closest when you finally want to express yourself yeah when you held back your sadness and your powerlessness and your shame for too long and it just bursts out of you and you want to make people hear you but it comes out as this aggressive ugly language where people um, have two choices they can make this uh, how do you say they can play the not hearing not seeing um, just receiving but actually being shut down so they keep being in your presence but don't really understand you and just wait until you're done then there's the other person who snaps back which makes it most of the time even worse and then there's the person who can see that you are in pain and then cuts through and just gets in there and is there for you even though you were aggressive and those are the people who really get you who really want to be close to you and we have to learn to express ourselves better and that aggression is a nice tool is an awesome awesome uh, emotion to sometimes get things done and to be successful but when we interact with others when we want to feel understood aggression can't be the way to go it pushes people away it scares people uh, especially when it is a man and a woman and the woman is the enabler and the man is reacting aggressively then the woman will not change her behavior the way it be best she will be scared she will be defensive and she will manipulate and fuck you up in other ways than you actually want so this is my first episode about aggression 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 and it was not the last um i'm finding it awesome to talk about it it helps me a lot if you follow bill burr if you know the comedian then um, look up some stuff from him he's hilarious and he talks about his um, aggression quite openly um, i'm gonna leave you at that um, take really good care of yourself we covered a lot today and don't forget itunes spotify and stitcher are the platforms where you can find me in the future lots of love Aurora with the Borealis experience. Bye-bye.